Warning, mercury 2 oxide is a very toxic substance that can be absorbed through inhalation, the skin, and by ingestion. This experiment must be done with proper protective equipment and in a well-ventilated area or outside. Mercury 2 oxide, also known as mercuric oxide, is a nice looking orange-red powder at room temperature. Interestingly enough, this compound was used in 1774 by Joseph Priestley to discover the element oxygen. When heated, mercuric oxide decomposes into mercury liquid and oxygen gas. In Priestley's experiment, he noticed that a mouse could survive for a while when in a closed container with mercuric oxide heated up. This was, of course, because the mouse was able to breathe the oxygen until it was all used up. Now let's get into the experiment. This is the overall setup, with the mercuric oxide going here on the left, and with the tube leading into a graduated cylinder filled with water to collect the oxygen gas. You'll notice that the test tube is angled slightly on a rubber mallet. This makes it easier for the mercury that will be produced to collect on the side. This could have been done more easily by rotating the clamp, but apparently I wasn't thinking very much when doing this trial. The graduated cylinder is almost entirely filled with water, meaning the air that is collected inside will be nearly pure oxygen gas, with a very small amount of mercury vapor. So when everything is set up and ready, I pour in the mercuric oxide. Then I start to heat things up. At first, not much is happening. Slowly but surely, you can see the color change from the characteristic red to an almost black. I'm actually unsure why this happens, and I've found no research articles written on the matter anywhere. I'll go into my hypothesis on what's happening in a bit. Over time, you begin to see metallic mercury condensing on the sides of the test tube in a ring. It continues to condense in that cool area, and will soon enough coalesce into small spheres of pure mercury metal. Now, when I was admiring the bits of mercury metal, I was completely oblivious to the color changing of the black powder at the bottom of the tube. Over time, as you can see in this shot, it changed back to the, its original red color. I tried heating up the mercuric oxide again to see if I would get the same result, and I did. Although I couldn't find any direct evidence of why this occurs, I assume it's the collection of liquid mercury around the particles of the mercuric oxide. As it's being heated, more and more mercury is being generated, which is why the powder remains a dark color. It vaporizes and condenses above in the tube. When the heating ceases, the small mercury coating on the particles of mercuric oxide disappears as the mercury coalesces with itself at cooler temperatures, and this is all happening within the powder itself. I was hypothesizing about a possible alternative route for the reaction to occur with mercurous oxide, a chemically unstable compound that converts back to mercuric oxide over time. However, via Occam's razor, this theory is over complex and probably not viable. Anyways, back to the reaction. The entire time I was heating the mercuric oxide, oxygen was being produced. To test if this really was oxygen, I took a twig and charred it slightly. Then I placed it into the cylinder to see if the gas had any effect. Obviously it did, as the stick started to glow brightly and burn far faster. You can actually see some of the water vapor building up on the side of the cylinder due to the complete combustion of the organics in the twig. 
When I was done testing the oxygen, I went back over to take some pictures of what I had left in the test tube. As you can see, there's some leftover mercuric oxide as well as nice little balls of mercury on top. I actually tried recovering the mercury metal by washing everything with a bit of water, but I was unsuccessful and couldn't actually find the residual mercury at the bottom of the tube. However, what was left over was a nice looking mercury mirror on the side, which I'll eventually need to remove with some nitric acid. That's all I have for mercuric oxide. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like these, feel free to subscribe and check out some of my others. I try to post weekly, so look out for some more coming soon. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.